Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we've got one of the uh, upgrades that I think is going to be necessary to make this uh, TTO2 a little bit more competitive and it is the OP1500 high speed gear set for the uh, TTO2 and we do get like the uh, little um, spool and everything and you do get a plastic gear with it and a bunch of screws. So let's get you a close up uh, look at this and see if we need anything else to make it fit in the stock TTO2. So parts we get with it, we have the actual gear itself. So let's have a look, see if it tells us what this is. I believe, I think it says 66T or 68 little bit awkward to see probably a 68 so we're gonna mount that on the back and then line it up with some holes four little screws and a spacer so we're gonna have to put that on line it up and then we should be able to drop the screws through and tighten these up. And looking at the spacings on these, I should think it'd be quite easy to get different gearing. So we just need to tighten these up. Don't go crazy, crazy tight with it because it is just a plastic gear. And they are quite, quite small threads. We also get a little drive pin and a spacer. So next thing we're going to need to do, we're going to want to I can find a screwdriver that fits so we're going to want to now remove our gear cover And on this, the three shorter screws all go to this side. The one longer one is on the outside. See how much of the uh, RC we actually need to strip off. I believe we should get away with just the four screws at top of the sort of the diff cover, if you like. So that should let us lift this up just enough to get the uh, drive shaft off. And then we can lift out the gear that we're replacing. So that's the parts that we're taking out. Now uh, I'm going to have to pull the drive pin out. And then slide the plastic spacer off. Then it's turn as we need the aluminium spacer. And let's see if the drive pin is shorter. Yeah, 
So the drive pin you get with the optional gear kit is slightly shorter. So we want the spacer, the new drive pin, and then we should be able to slide that gear in on. And we should have to change the actual pinion position or motor position. Then you want your bearing on. And we want your drive gear on. And should be able to pop that back into position. So then we just need to get our four screws back to hold the top of the diff and the shock covers on. In fact we got one screw already in here so I get that fastened down and it should hold his diff cover in place so I can screw everything else back in. So so far not actually a bad job to do. Um, I did think that maybe we'd have to strip it down a little bit more than what we had. But so far it's looking like uh, the only things that are needed is the two screws on the front and back of the diff top cover. And the four screws that hold the uh, motor cover plate on, or gear cover plate. So that's got us gearing back in place. It does look like this sits slightly further out, so definitely going to have to move the pinion out anyway but that's a 70 tooth and it's a 68 tooth spur that we've put on and that's definitely uh, definitely going to need as uh, motor moving but not sure if we've actually got the positioning for it so Let's have a look on this stock motor man and see if we can move the pinion at all. So you've got the two screws in the bottom. So we've got these two that we need to remove and then that lets you lift the motor out. So let's see if we can make this motor a little bit closer. Would be a lot easier with the fully adjustable motor mount. So I'm just going to try turning the motor one position, see if that brings us any closer and the, uh, the motor mat is definitely something that I'm going to look into upgrading to an aluminium one um, just to help dissipate the heat and it's a lot better if you've got more options to mesh the actual pinion But yeah, that looks a lot better mesh. So basically, all we've done is move the screws from this and this position to that one and that one. So hopefully you can see the position I've moved them to. Um, it's moved it from the 22 to the 21 position on the stock motor mount. But that certainly makes the uh, the mesh feels right on this on this gearing. But it looks like we need to move the 
Looks like we need to move the pinion out ever so slightly. If you can see, it's just not riding completely on the uh, on the spur gear. So let's see if we can do this. That's a lot better. So you, hopefully you can see the pinion and spur is now completely in line. So should be able to refit our cover plate. So nothing needs modifying on that yet. I uh, do know if you go up to a certain size on the pinion with the adjustable motor mount, you do get an issue with it binding on the inner cover. Or on the inside of that cover, should I say? But overall, not uh, not really too bad of a job to do, and it should hopefully improve the top speed a little, make it a little bit more competitive. So. Uh, See if I can uh, see if I can do any better than winning the C final with it. Last thing we've got to do is flip it over and put the two screws in for the motor mount. And there we have it. Still feels nice and smooth so let's wrap this one up right so there we have it the parts you left over with from the stock kit we have the uh, 70 70 tooth spur gear we've got the stock longer drive pin and the little plastic spacer but it does feel really nice and smooth and uh, hopefully it'll give us that little bit more speed. There was definitely plenty of acceleration on it. Um, so acceleration is not an issue. We just need a little bit more top speed. And just wondering if I've got any springs from uh, plenty of the other kits I've built. See if we can soften this suspension a little. But thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, share to friends and family, and I'll catch you guys again in the next one.